A Jesus kid, I'm a Jesus kid. I believe the good news, so I'm a Jesus kid. A Jesus kid, I'm a Jesus kid. God can use me too, cause I'm a Jesus kid. A Jesus kid. Hi boys and girls, Pastor Steve here. Welcome to Kids Church. Today we're going to continue learning about sowing to the Spirit. We're going to continue looking at Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8 about sowing to the flesh and sowing to the Spirit. And we're going to look at Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 and looking at what it means to meditate on things that are just. So make sure you have your Bibles, boys and girls, and I'll see you in just a little bit. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Philippians 4, 8.
Hey kids, let's sing the B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E, yes that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E, yes that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Faster now. The B-I-B-L-E, yes that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the Faster now, the B I B L E. That's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B I B L E. The B I B L E. That's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B I B L E. One more time, the B I B L E. That's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B I B L E. The B I B L E. That's the book for me. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Galatians 6, 8. Welcome back, everyone. Are you ready to continue learning about what it means to sow to the Spirit? Do you have your Bibles with you? Good. Well, before we begin, boys and girls, there's something important that we need to do. What is it? That's right, we need to pray. So let's bow our heads, let's close our eyes, and let's pray. Dear Jesus, we just thank you for today, Lord. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done for us. Lord, we thank you, Father, for your provision and your protection, for your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you, God, that you never, ever, ever change. And we thank you, Lord, for giving us your word and for this time, God, that we have to open it up, Lord, and to hear from you. And we pray, Jesus, that's exactly what we do today, Lord. May we, all distractions, Lord, be removed and may our focus be upon you and what you have to tell us. And so may you bless our time now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, boys and girls, do you remember our memory verse that was read earlier on in today's lesson? It comes from Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8. Let's look at it one more time. It says, For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Now, boys and girls, why do you think that God wants us to walk in the Spirit. Why do you think? Well, if you said because he wants to have a personal relationship with us before we get to heaven, you're absolutely right. You see, boys and girls, God wants to walk with us and talk with us so that way we can spend time with him and learn more of him. And boys and girls, do you know that when we get to heaven, all we're going to be doing is worshiping him. I can't wait to worship him forever and ever. But guess what, boys and girls? We don't have to wait till we get to heaven to do that. We can do that right here and right now. Boys and girls, in Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, it tells us something very, very special. It tells us that God wants us to have a relationship with him and he wants to adopt us into his family. And do you know that he wants us to call him Abba Father? Do you know that Abba is the Hebrew word for father? It's like a term of endearment. It means daddy. Abba means daddy. Now you see, boys and girls, God wants us to have a very close, intimate personal relationship with him. He doesn't want our relationship with him to be formal. Now, I'm a daddy. I have four little ones at home. And one of the things that I love is when my kids call me daddy. Daddy is a whole lot different than them calling me father. You could be at home and my, my kids, if they called me father, could you come here a minute, please? 
That's a whole lot different than, Daddy, could you please come here? Daddy is a different type of relationship than a father. A daddy is someone who has a close, intimate, personal relationship. One where they feel comfortable in coming and talking to me. And do you know, boys and girls, that's the same way that God wants our relationship with him to be? He doesn't want it to be a formal relationship. Father, Father God, I thank you. No, he wants Daddy, Jesus, I love you and I thank you. He wants us that personal, close relationship where we can come to him at any time, boys and girls. Do you know those of us that have asked Jesus to come into our hearts? We now have the ability to have that close, personal relationship with him. And do you know, boys and girls, that this relationship that we have with God is on a spiritual level? It's his spirit communes with our spirit. That means his spirit speaks to our spirit, boys and girls. And it lets us know how much that he loves us and how wonderful we are to him. Do you know, boys and girls, that this is almost too much to understand? Boys and girls, when he speaks to us on a personal level, boys and girls, do you know that means he's talking to us individually? And that's what he wants to do, boys and girls. For those of us that are part of his family, do you know that I'm a part of God's family? And if you've asked Jesus to come into your heart, you are too. Well, boys and girls, there may be some of you out there that have yet to ask Jesus to come into your heart, that have yet to ask Jesus if you could be a part of his big, happy family. Well, do you know, boys and girls, that you can be sure when you die that you're going to go to heaven? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Have you ever asked yourself the question, what's going to happen to me when I die? I have, and I have the answer for me and for my life. I know that I'm going to go to heaven. Boys and girls, do you? Do you have the answer for you and your life? Do you know where you're going to go when you die? The Bible tells us, boys and girls, that God loves us and that he sent Jesus Christ, his son, to show his love for you and for me. The Bible tells us in John 3, 16, that he loved us so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross, and that whoever believes in him is not going to perish but have everlasting life. Boys and girls, do you know why he did this? He did this because we all have sin. The Bible tells us that in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, it says, For all have sinned, and all fall short of his glory. Boys and girls, there's not one of us who have not sinned. But do you know, boys and girls, that because of our sin and because of his love for us, he died for us? He tells us that in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, it says, But God demonstrated his own love toward us, that while we were still sinners, he died for us. And do you know, boys and girls, he died, but we have to do something. We have to ask him to come into our hearts to forgive us of all of our sins. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, boys and girls, it tells us that the wages of sin is death. Sin causes death, spiritual death, eternity separated from him. But as we continue on with the verse in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, it says, even though the wages of our sin is death, it says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Boys and girls, God has a special gift for you and for me, for all of those who have sinned. That's everybody. He's willing to give you this special gift, and that's eternal life. And how do you get this gift, boys and girls? All you have to do is accept it. The Bible tells us that we are to confess with our mouth in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. It says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Boys and girls, all of this is a demonstration of God's love for you and for me. And boys and girls, if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart and to forgive you of your sins, you can do that 
right now. Boys and girls, all you have to do is say, God, I'm sorry. I know that I've sinned and done wrong things. And I want you to forgive me. Come into my life and be Lord of my life. And give me your spirit to help me walk with you for the rest of my days. And boys and girls, if you said that and you mean it in your heart, do you know what? God has forgiven you. And you have the hope and the promise of eternity in heaven. And do you know, boys and girls, that he's given you his spirit to walk with you and to talk with you and to help you through this life to sow to his spirit, to do those things, boys and girls, that he's asked us to do in his word. Now, boys and girls, in our memory verse, in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8, it talks about this word corruption. It says, for he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. Now let's think about this word corruption for a minute. Do you remember what the word corruption means? Corruption can mean dishonesty or deception. But here, boys and girls, this word corruption, it means eternity separated from God, eternal death. And so what Paul is telling us here in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8 is that if we sow to our flesh, if we do things, boys and girls, that are against what God has for us, that we're going to reap something. We're going to reap corruption. Eternity separated from God forever and ever. Now, in 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 19, Peter, who writes this book, tells us, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also is he brought into bondage. Now, boys and girls, what Peter is telling us here is that whatever we choose to do, we're going to become slaves to it. We're going to be brought into bondage. And bondage is whatever it is that takes us or takes control over our lives. And whatever takes control over our lives, boys and girls, we are then in bondage to it. Now, boys and girls, as Christians, we are slaves to Jesus Christ. We've accepted Jesus into our hearts and we've asked him to be Lord and master of our lives. And boys and girls, when we've done that, I don't know about you, but I've noticed that I would much rather be a slave to Jesus than to be a slave to sin and Satan or a slave to my own flesh. Now, in becoming a slave to Jesus, boys and girls, we're free. We have freedom in Christ. We are no longer forced to do those things that our flesh desires, that were destroying us. We have the freedom to do those things that God wants. And when we do those things that God wants, boys and girls, those things that he gives to us in his word, it brings peace into our lives. We have the joy of knowing that what we're doing pleases him brings God honor and glory. I want to share a passage of scripture with you out of the book of Romans. Boys and girls, Romans was written by the Apostle Paul, and it was to the church that was in Rome. And in Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 11, boys and girls, it says this. It says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you, speaking to Christians, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. 
but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you now, if anybody does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his, meaning he is not God's. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Now I know, boys and girls, that that's a lot of scripture to take in. But what Paul is telling us, boys and girls, that if we're walking in the flesh, if we're walking in the ways of this world, we are walking away from God. We're going to reap eternal separation from him. But boys and girls, if we're walking in the spirit, if we're walking after God and doing those things according to God's word, not only here on earth are we going to have peace, but we have the promise of eternal life with Jesus Christ. Now, boys and girls, I want you to look at your screen and I want you to, to think about some of the things that we do to sow to the spirit. Now, boys and girls, we can spend all day vegging out, looking at the computer, watching TV, playing video games, doing all of those things, which in itself, boys and girls, sometimes are fun and sometimes okay. But when we do those things, boys and girls, we need to ask ourselves, are we sowing to the flesh or are we sowing to the spirit? Yeah, we're sowing to the flesh. Those things that are going to bring corruption or destruction to our lives. But boys and girls, if we spend time with God, reading his word, following after him, doing those things, boys and girls, that he has asked us to do, are we sowing to the flesh or are we sowing to the Spirit? That's right, we're sowing to the Spirit. Now we have to ask ourselves, boys and girls, what do we want to do? Do we want to sow to the flesh, or do we want to sow to the Spirit? The choice is yours. But remember, based upon what we choose, boys and girls, will depend upon what we reap. Remember Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8 says, For he who sows to his flesh will of his flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will reap everlasting life. Boys and girls, the choice is yours. Are you going to sow to your flesh or are you going to sow to the Spirit? Hello, boys and girls. I'm Dr. Moody. It is good to see you all. Usually I'm in my laboratory working on many, many different experiments. But today, we will be doing some activities together. Our first activity is gonna be doing some connect the dots. One, two, three, four, all the way. Ah, yes, it looks like a brontosaurus. Up top. Over, over. It looks like an S and a T. Ah, that appears to be a U. 23, 24, 25, six, seven, eight. Ah, yes, a J. Just. Okay, kids, now let's talk about the word just. Just means to be following God's standard of right and wrong in everything that we do. I'll leave the rest of that explanation for Pastor Steve. Well, hi, boys and girls. Welcome back. Let's practice again our theme verse, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. It says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Well, great job, boys and girls. So far, we've looked at what it means to meditate on things that are true and things that are noble. We know that God's word is truth, that Jesus is the truth, and that the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. 
We know that the things that are noble are things that are excellent or outstanding or great. And we were reminded in our last Bible study that we are to focus on things that are above, that we're to seek or to search after those things that are noble. Well, today, boys and girls, we're going to take just a couple minutes and we're going to look at the next word. It means, it says, whatever things are just. Now, let's talk for just a second about what it means to meditate on things that are just. Just means to follow God's standard of what's right and wrong in all we do. Now, boys and girls, where do we find God's standard for our lives? If you said the Bible, you're absolutely right. This is where we find God's standard for our lives. And boys and girls, as we read it and as we, 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 we meditate on it, God speaks to us and he shows us those things that we are to do that are right and those things that we are to avoid that are wrong. And so boys and girls, in Philippians chapter four and verse eight, we're told that we are to meditate on things that are just. We're to meditate on God's word. And do you remember what it means to meditate? Meditate means to think about something or to dwell on something over and over and over again. And remember, that's what we're supposed to be doing with God's word. Now, let's look at some scriptures from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 together. And as we look through these scriptures, we're going to see a list of things that we are to do as we walk in the Spirit. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, in verse 15, it tells us, See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good both for yourselves and for all. Now remember, boys and girls, we're looking at things that we are to do as we walk in the Spirit. So as you look at this verse, what is one of the things that we should be doing? Always pursuing what is good. Well, let's look at verse 16. Verse 16 says, rejoice always. Now, as we are walking in the Spirit, what should we be doing, boys and girls? That's right, rejoicing always. You know, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4, it tells us, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And Paul is reminding us again in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 16 that we are to rejoice always. Now, in verse 17, it tells us to pray without ceasing. So if we are walking in the Spirit, boys and girls, what are we to be doing? That's right, praying without ceasing. Verse 18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Walking in the Spirit, what should we be doing? That's right, we should be giving thanks. Verse 19, it says, do not quench the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit, boys and girls, we're not to do those things that are going to hurt the Holy Spirit, that are against what the Holy Spirit is telling us. Verse 20, it says, do not despise prophecies. So when we're walking in the Spirit, we're not going to neglect what God's Word is telling us. Verse 21 it says, test all things, hold fast to what is good. Walking in the Spirit, what should we be doing? Holding fast to what is good. And verse 22, boys and girls, it says, abstain from every form of evil. Walking in the Spirit, what should we be doing? Abstaining or staying away from every form of of evil. Now, boys and girls, we are to be walking in the Spirit. We are to be sowing to the Spirit. And boys and girls, Paul has given us a list of things that we are to do. Now, remember, 
We are to meditate on things that are just. We are to dwell on things. We are to seek after, we're to search, we're to think about those things that are just. And those things that are just are God's standards for our lives, whether they're right or wrong. And we find those in God's word. And that's what Paul is giving us. Paul is telling us to pursue those things that are good. Boys and girls, in order to find those things that are good, we need to look to God's word. He's telling us to rejoice always. We're to rejoice in the Lord. What do we have to rejoice about, boys and girls? Think about that for a second. What do you have to rejoice about? He tells us that we're to pray. Pray always. Pray without ceasing. That doesn't mean, boys and girls, that we walk around all the time with our eyes closed. No, boys and girls. It means that whenever we can, we're always talking to God. We're having that close personal relationship with him. He tells us to give thanks in everything. Boys and girls, we're not just to think about those things that we're thankful for at Thanksgiving. We're to be thankful for them all the time. What are you thankful for, boys and girls? Can you list some things that you're thankful for? And those things that you list, do you know what, boys and girls? You should in turn thank God for those things. The Bible tells us not to quench his spirit, to not despise prophecies, to hold fast to what is good. And then in verse 22, boys and girls, he says to stay away from all things that are evil that look like it, any form of it. And when he's saying stay away or abstain from it, doesn't mean to see how close you can get to it. it means to stay far, far, far away from it. Boys and girls, we don't wanna mess with evil. We don't wanna get close to those things that are wrong. Because the closer we are to those things that are wrong, the closer we're going to be tempted to do those things. Me, I want to stay far away from those things, but I want to stay close to God. Boys and girls, as we finish up our study today, who do you know that is totally and truly just? That's right. Jesus is just. And I would encourage you, boys and girls, as our Bible verse in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 has told us, it says, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, what are we to do with those things, boys and girls? That's right. We're to meditate on them. And boys and girls, as we meditate on those things, as we dwell on those things, those things are going to become a part of our lives that we're sowing to the Spirit at this point. And down the road, boys and girls, we're going to see a harvest, something plentiful, something good from those things that we are sowing in our lives today. Well, boys and girls, Let's pray and let's thank God for giving us his word and those things that we can meditate on that are just. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this time, God, that you've given to us. We thank you, Lord, that we can meditate on those things that are just. God, those things that are just are your standards for us in our lives, those things that are right and those things that are wrong. Lord, thank you for giving us your word. And Lord, I pray, God, as we meditate on these things, Lord, Father, that we would become doers of them. Lord, I pray, God, that our lives, Lord, would bring 
glory and honor to you, Father, that you would be pleased and happy with the things that we do in our lives. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for teaching us. We thank you, Lord, that you want to have that close, personal relationship with us. And Lord, may we always, 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 Lord, walk with you and talk with you and have that relationship with you, Lord, that you have, that you desire to have with us. And so, Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you would bless each boy and each girl, Lord, as they continue to walk in the Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ah, welcome back, everyone. We're going to be going over our memory verse now. In Galatians 6, 8, it says, For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Now for our second activity, we're going to be doing a word search. And in that word search, we'll find words from our memory verse. Let's get to it. Okay, so the words we're going to be looking for in the word search will be souls, flesh, reap, corruption, spirit, and everlasting. Okay, so the first word we're going to be searching for is souls. To sow means to place seeds into the ground for a future harvest or to plant. Let's see if we can find it. I see an S on the far left side. Uggs goes over to the right. Sows, there it is. The next word is going to be flesh. Flesh are the things of this world, the things that cause us to sin. If you look towards the middle right, you can see an F there, and it goes diagonal upwards, and it says flesh. The next word is reap. Reap means to harvest that which was already sown. Let's see if we can find it. Hmm, over by the word flesh, you see an R to the left of it. Diagonally down, there it is, it says reap. The next word is corruption. And corruption is very sad, it is eternal separation from God. Look to where flesh is, there's a few letters there that might spell corruption. It goes diagonally through it. The next word, spirit, the third person of the Trinity, and it's what we are sown to. Let's see if we can find the word. Left of reap, you can see the word right there. Yes, it says spirit. And lastly, we have the word everlasting. Everlasting is eternal, without end, and never ceases. It's what will be in heaven. We will live there forever. Let's see if we can find everlasting. At the very top left of your screen, you can see an E. And you go all the way down, it spells everlasting. Well, great job, everyone. That was wonderful. Let's go over Galatians 6, 8 one more time. And it says, For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Well done, everyone. Well, I hope to see you all in my laboratory soon so that we can do experiments. I hope to see you all very, very soon. Goodbye.